Woo! All right, what is up, everybody? So I've put off doing my first Yamaha T7 review for a few weeks now. I've uh, probably put it off longer than I have on any other bike that I've done the kind of first review on. Uh, and I just wanted to get to know the bike really well before I just fired from the hip talking about, you know, how good I think it is because it's something I just got. So, of course, I'm going to be excited about it. So, I've put about 500 miles on it in three weeks. And for those of you that don't follow the channel, I've owned uh, V-Strom, KLR650, DR650, DR350, DRZ400, DR200, Yamaha XT225, KLX250, I mean, almost, I ain't gonna say all the dual sports, but I've owned a lot of predominantly dual sports. The closest thing I'm gonna be comparing this bike to is probably gonna be the KLR650. Um, yeah, the KLR is a single cylinder, this is a twin, but they're really close in displacement, and they're both kind of, I mean, this is one of the smaller displacement uh, off-road capable adventure bikes you can get that's still multi-cylinder. And then the KLR is like the biggest dual sport slash small adventure bike you can get in the single cylinder category. So I also have a KLR for four years and 20,000 miles. So that's a real familiar bike and platform for me. Mine in particular was a Gen 2. Um, so just jumping right into it, um, I love the bike. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, in comparing it to the KLR, it's just better in every way. In some aspects, it might only be a little bit better. Um, in some aspects, it's, it's maybe way better. So the engine on this thing is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it's got double, more than double the power at the wheel of a KLR 650. Let me check something out real quick. We've had a lot of rain. I'm curious what the water levels look like. Uh, not terrible. So yeah, as far as the engine is concerned, it is light years ahead, in my opinion. Ooh, hang on. Off-road. Let's kill the ABS in case I need to lock up the rear. Yeah, the KLR just doesn't have that kind of uh, engine performance. Um, fuel economy is better than a KLR. I always averaged around 52 or 53 on a KLR. And across 500 miles, I've been averaging 58 on this bike. It doesn't have the fuel capacity of the KLR. I think we've got like 4.2 gallons versus 6.2 uh, or something like that with the KLR. Um, that still gives you great fuel range though. Uh, I did 200 miles in national forest land on dirt roads and some double track trails. Uh, I did 200 miles all on one tank and still had plenty left when I got back to the truck. Um, suspension. Suspension's better. A lot of people are complaining that the T7 stock is undersprung. I'm not gonna say it's not true but I mean, there's, there's a caveat to everything and that just depends on your weight. If you're well over 200 pounds and then you load the bike down with gear, then at the very least, you're probably gonna want a stiffer rear spring. I'm 170 with you know riding gear on, not counting luggage or anything. And I've been able to get good sag numbers uh, in setting the rear preload and I've got everything tuned uh, pretty much like I like it. Uh, you know, all the stock components, and the KLR is uh, unanimously undersprung. We'll say, um, regardless of weight, it was undersprung for me when I had it. Um, the rear was was actually fine. I was able to get away with that. It was the front that was 
just too soft and undersprung. So. Price point, yeah, this bike is at best four thousand dollars more, uh, depending on you know your market and where you know how your dealer stock and dealer fees. And there's multiple versions of the KLR, which range in price as well. So, I mean, like I said, at best it's you know a four thousand dollar price difference. And you will say be a little more uh, in most cases it probably is a little more um, but I mean you get what you pay for and in my opinion uh, it's worth the extra money depending on how you're gonna ride it you know um, it's just for the way I ride you know being able to like hooligan around a little bit and, and rip down the dirt road like I just did Obviously, this bike's more fun. The suspension's better if you're going to be doing a little bit more off-road. If you're going to be doing like you know, super hard core enduro type heavy enduro riding, then uh, you may find that the suspension's you know not as good as you want it to be. Um, I've got the 2023 model, so I've got don't have the color TFT dash. And I don't have multiple ride modes. You've just got ABS on or off. And I think, I'm not positive, I hadn't tried locking up the front yet uh, with ABS off, but uh, I do believe. Come on now, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Um, I do believe. More of them? I do believe when you kill the ABS, it just kills the rear. Uh, I think I read that somewhere, but again, I haven't tried locking up the front. I mean, we are on a gravel road. I guess I could try it. Nope, you can lock up the front. So it kills ABS front and rear. Um, I'm almost 99% sure I read it only disables the rear, but on this particular bike, it's not true because I just locked the front. Um, so you can ABS on and off. If you buy the KLR with ABS, I don't think you can disable it. You'd have to pull the fuse or something. Um, but, again, just, it's my opinion, and we know, all know the saying about opinions. Everybody's got one. Um, I, I, I prefer this head over heels over a KLR. Um, you know, a DR650, it's a little different. You know, that bike's considerably lighter. Um, I mean, this bike's lighter than a KLR, but we're only talking like 40 pounds on paper. Um, again, depending on which model of KLR you're, you're choosing. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you anything here you haven't probably already seen or heard in another video, but I really enjoy the bike. There's a couple things the KLR does a little better. The KLR's got better wind protection. The way the uh, gas tank fairings uh, and the gas tank are shaped together, you don't end up catching as much wind on your knees, at least not if you're short-legged like I am, I'm five foot seven. Uh, and then also I feel like you don't catch as much wind on your shoulders as much. Uh, the tower and the screen on this bike's really narrow. Um, so wind protection's a fuzz better on the KLR. KLR does have a wider, flatter seat. I mean, this seat is flat, um, but it's just a little narrower and it is swept up a little bit in the back where the KLR is not just flat to itself, but kind of parallel to the ground. Um, so a lot of, I've heard and read on, on the forums and the Facebook groups that some people don't like the comfort of the seat. Um, if, if you're used to riding a lot of deal sports, I think this seat will be 
plenty comfortable for you. No bike is going to be perfect off the showroom floor for everyone. Um, so this bike is no exception. It could use a few things to make it better for me. Uh, bar risers uh, would be nice. Probably eventually be getting a set of those. Nothing crazy. Not not some $200 rocks risers or anything. Uh, just straight up and back on the angle that the forks are on. So probably get the Tusk 30 millimeter risers. Might even go 15, I don't need much. Um, I'm perfectly comfortable with the seat. I've already got uh, a Tusk rear rack, so I can put my tail bag on the back, and that tail bag doubles as a passenger backrest for my wife. It's got a plate in it, um, so it's rigid on the front, front side of that tail bag. Um, so there, there's a few things I need or will want to do to the bike uh, to help make it a little more comfortable for me. Really, it's just the, the handlebar risers. Um, the stock skid plate is trash, but at least it comes with one, unlike the Transalp 750, um, which would be another bike that would kind of be in this small displacement, multi-cylinder adventure bike category. Um, but overall, uh, I feel like I've kind of hit the key bullet notes. If you're interested in KLR or a small twin cylinder, multi-cylinder adventure bike, um, you know, if, if you find the KLR shortcomings in, you know, the engine and the weight, you know, you wish it had a few more ponies, you wish it weighed 40 pounds less, uh, you wish it had better suspension from the factory. I mean, this is it. I, this is what Kawasaki should have made when they brought out the third gen KLR. They should have took the Versi 650 engine, tuned it for a little more uh, low and mid-range torque, and then they should have shoehorned that into a KLR with, of course, its frame and everything would have to be redesigned around it. Um, and then they should have put some budget upside down forks that are fully tunable. Um, and you know, if they had done that, the KLR as we know it would no longer exist, not brand new anyway, and you would just have a straight competitor to the T7. So, I mean, overall for the community, it's probably best they didn't because that keeps the KLR as an option. As we know it anyway. But I feel like this bike I feel like this bike does give the majority of KLR owners what they want, what they wish the KLR was, if that makes sense. So, uh, again, nothing new, crazy info-wise with this video, um, especially considering I'm late to the T7 game. It's been out for years now. But I do love the bike. I do enjoy the bike. I think it is uh, well-suited for my riding. Um, you know, a lot of true dual sports are kind of not going to be great primary bikes for me because my wife likes to ride on the back. And a lot of adventure bikes, um, you know, like I had a V-Strom 650, it just didn't suit me for off-road and on-road it was great. It didn't suit me for off-road and it wasn't very fun to just go out and rip by myself. Um, can't really hoon around on it like you can on the T7. So uh, that would be my 500 mile review. Uh, first kind of overlook of the bike, what I think of it compared to other bikes I've owned. I think it's a great machine and uh, look forward to putting many more miles on it, doing a few mods here or there as time goes by and bringing you along on the way providing some content so uh, if you like the video I always forget to say this you know hit the like button the thumbs up button uh, share it with a riding buddy and uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content um, and that's all I got uh, it's a nice beautiful morning here in North Alabama I got a full day planned so I had to get out early and just do this little 10 15 mile dirt road rip around my house um, 
it's Mother's Day weekend, so uh, for all the, the ladies out there, I doubt I've got very many female uh, subscribers or viewers, but enjoy your Mother's Day, guys. Be nice to you ladies, give them something special this weekend, grill for them, cook for them, do something for them, and uh, let them know you appreciate them. <laughs>